Today, let's talk about the digital asset company BMNR and its absolutely massive singular goal. But you know what's even more interesting? We're going to ask what happens after they actually achieve it. Because for BMNR, hitting their target isn't the finish line. It's the launch pad. It's a pretty fascinating question, isn't it? I mean, it's something every ambitious company has to face eventually. Do you cash in on your success? Do you just double down and do it all over again? Or do you use all that momentum to pivot to something even bigger? This is the exact question staring BNR right in the face. And this. This is the number at the very heart of it all. 5%. That's BMNR's stated goal, to acquire a full 5% of the entire Ethereum network. It is an ambition so huge it literally defines everything they do. And let's be super clear, this isn't just a goal for them. It is the goal. The company's entire strategy, I mean, every press release, every dollar they raise, it's all built to serve this one number. It is their absolute North Star. You know, they have a really interesting way of talking about it, too. This phrase right here, the alchemy of 5%, it shows up in basically every single document they release. So it's way more than just a goal. It's become part of their core identity. They're not just buying ETH. They truly believe they're creating something transformative out of it. Well, they are accumulating ETH at a crazy pace. So it really feels like a question of when they hit that number, not if. Which, of course, brings us right back to our big question. Are they just going to say, hey, we did it, and pack up their bags? Yeah, not likely. So let's explore the potential paths they could take, all based on their own documents and communications. Okay, so what's the first, most obvious move? Well, they could just turn their massive pile of assets into a nonstop cash machine. I mean, with 5% of the entire network, the potential for a steady, recurring revenue stream is just immense. And the way they do this is through something called staking. In really simple terms, by holding onto their Ethereum and using it to help validate transactions and keep the network secure, they earn rewards. You can just think of it like earning a whole lot of interest on a gigantic savings account. So, what does that look like in real numbers? Well, even if we're being super conservative here, let's say a 3% yield and an Ethereum price hanging around $5,000, that 5% stake could pull in nearly $200 million in revenue every single year. That is a seriously powerful cash flow engine. But what if Ethereum's price really, really takes off? If ETH does a 10x from where it is today, that yearly revenue from staking jumps to over a billion and a half dollars. That is a truly mind-boggling number. But as powerful as that is, it's probably just the beginning of their plan. What if all that cash flow isn't really the end goal? That brings us to path number two, which is built on a simple, pretty aggressive idea. 5% isn't the ceiling, it's the new floor. And this chart illustrates that strategic shift perfectly. Phase one is just this relentless all-out drive to get to 5%, but phase two is all about maintaining that position, you know, staying north of 5%, maybe even pushing to 6 or 7%, while they start to diversify their treasuries into other digital assets. So where might they start to diversify? Well, you don't have to look far. Their own SEC filings give us a massive clue. Before they went all in on this Ethereum quest, BMNR was a Bitcoin mining company. They still hold Bitcoin, and they have all the infrastructure and expertise. This strongly suggests that a renewed focus on Bitcoin could be right around the corner. So you can start to see the future portfolio taking shape, right? They'd likely build this really balanced treasury, keep stacking ETH as their high-yield engine, reinvest in the established power of Bitcoin, and then take some calculated risks on those high-reward moonshot assets, like their current stake in ASCO. All right. This brings us to our third and maybe the most dynamic path. With a huge treasury and a powerful revenue stream, BMNR could go on an absolute shopping spree, growing not just by stacking assets, but by straight up acquiring other companies. And from what we can see in their investor documents, it looks like they'd attack this from two different angles. First, they could just buy other companies that are sitting on digital assets, especially if those companies are trading for less than what they hold. And second, they can start buying up technologies that fit in with their core business. And hey, this isn't just us speculating. This is pulled directly from their SEC filings on how they'll use their money. They've explicitly told regulators they have the flexibility to acquire businesses. This could mean buying a liquid staking company, a crypto lending platform, or any number of key pieces of the Web3 puzzle. So you've got cashing in, doubling down, and buying up the competition. Those are all really powerful moves. But there is a fourth path that seems to tie them all together, a long-term vision that feels like the ultimate goal, 
becoming a foundational builder for the entire next generation of the internet. And this is where it all really clicks into place. We need to stop seeing the 5% goal as the end game and start seeing it as the fuel. It's the foundation that gives them the capital, the credibility, and the network influence to go out and invest in and even build truly groundbreaking technologies on the blockchain. And their investor decks actually give us a peek into what they're dreaming about. We're talking about some seriously far future concepts here. Things like proof of humanity, which are protocols for proving a user is a real unique person, or systems for verifying AI microtransactions, not to mention next-gen scaling and stablecoin tech. They aren't just planning to own a piece of the network, they're planning to build the next floors on top of it. Which leaves us with one final and kind of provocative question to think about. The entire idea of blockchain is decentralization, right? BMNR's strategy, while frankly brilliant from a business perspective, creates this fundamental tension. As they get closer to their 5% goal and beyond, the influence of one single powerful company just grows and grows. So what does that really mean for the future of a supposedly decentralized world? It's definitely something to think about. Thanks for tuning in. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe. That helps us a lot.